All right, part four, part five, whatever part we're on now, is I get this question a lot in class, um, on Instagram, on my OnlyFans, et cetera, et cetera. Ruben, how do we get our opponent into a supine position so that we can actually do the Toriano passes, okay? So that's a really tough question, why? As Jiu Jitsu evolves, especially the sport of Nogi, we're getting more and more people that want to wrestle up. So go supine, they don't want to be here, okay? It fries their abs, they, they have a lot of disadvantages. The only way they're gonna be here is once they've actually maybe entangled you up. But if they have nothing, they don't want to be here. They want to start sitting up, starting to come up, trying to wrestle, all sorts of stuff. And when they try to wrestle, I have to defend and overextend myself to try to hold him down and now we end up on the knees in a pressure situation where he has butterflies, leg entanglements, etc. Okay, so there's like three methods that I use to get somebody supine. Now I'll preface this by saying you can't use one or the other. You have to combine them uh, in order to get success with this. Okay, I'll just show you the first three. Okay, now this one pisses me off the most because they show this in every fundamentals class, just a square butterfly, is they're like, okay, you're gonna step in, get the ankles, put them on their back, and now you're gonna to start to pass. And I was like, yes, I got that professor, great. And then you try it in sparring, you're like, shit, that doesn't, that doesn't really work, okay? And it, 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 it does, but it has to be the right situation, okay? So that is a valid way, is to pick up the ankles and try to put them back, okay? But if you have somebody explosive, right? Like, if I put his hands on the floor, he'll start to out me, and now I lose the grips. And then you're like, okay, that didn't work, okay? So first things first is the first method we need to look at is using a push and a pull. Now, that's all gonna be reliant on head position. I don't want a situation where my head is higher than my partner's head and he can come up and wrestle. So I wanna have head height, okay? Now, this is a tough stance to hold, especially for a 10 minute match. So I'll take some breaks, I'll move around, and then I get back to my stance where I block my lead leg, just like in wrestling. I'm matching head height. Now I'll start to push on the shoulders, trying to get him back. Now if he falls back, great. Now he's supine, okay? I'm not a super strong person, so that won't work for me. But what I use, I start to get him thinking, get him thinking to where I can go headlock, boom, okay? Oftentimes what tends to happen is they'll defend and they'll overreact. As they overreact, I take a same side ankle, not to pass, but to get to the supine situation. Now I'm past the hip line, he's laying down. Now he's reacting to my moves. And now, go ahead, move. Now I'm trying to pass, and now he's here. The worst mistake I can do is get him there and give him space to come back up. So again, match head height, pushing and pulling, pushing and pulling, front head. I go to the side of the headlock by capturing the ankle. Only when he pulls back to defend, and now I have control of this. I have control of this ankle, and I can switch to the knee and the hip. We start to use these passing methods to, to go into my Toriando series. Okay, so that's method two. So we looked at ankles, pushing and pulling. And the third one, again, not my favorite, but you have to combine it with these. Is just out trying to outflank them, trying to blast past them. Okay, now this one's a little more challenging. Seated if you have somebody who knows how to play a good seated guard. He knows he needs to mirror my leg here. Why? He's inviting me to take this space. If I go here, he can foot sweep me or block me at foot sweep behind and start to get me off balance. Okay, so he knows that this is my pathway. So I need to switch stance. If he doesn't switch stances, now I can outflank him, but a good guard player is gonna switch with me. And now I switch, okay? So this is where I start to hide my feet by pushing and pulling and switching. And once I create a situation where we're opposite, now I step past and outflank him. And I force him to make a decision. He could try to wrestle up. He could try to fall to his back and start to play guard. Or he might even turtle. That's not up to you. That'll be up to your partner. If they do go supine off of this, then great. That's where we wanted to anyway. So again, this is this way. So I'm right and he's mirroring the leg. If I try to blast past him, it's never gonna happen. If I try to go this way, I don't have the reach. So I have to switch my stance, but he's gonna switch, so go ahead and switch. So you have to hide it behind something. And when he doesn't switch, it's your time 
So you use that crescent step to block. And now here's the, the three main situations. You can wrestle up, you have your down block arm ready, he could supine, where you're ready to capture that far leg and hip, or he could turtle, where you gotta be ready to take the back, okay? We should think of an Ackerman for that. Always be ready to take the back. A, B, R, T, back. Always be ready, oh, I missed the T. A, B, R, T, T, B, always be ready to take the back, okay? So the three main methods. Now, let's look at them all kind of combined together. So, uh, see it, scoot back. So I'll be playing around, matching head height, trying to get those ankles, trying to blast, trying to move till I find a good opportunity. See how I kind of got him on this angle? He's kind of on his side. It's really hard to tell if you weren't actively looking for it. This is a good time to be a brute and push shoulders, okay? If he's square, go square. I'm gonna sit up. I'm gonna try to hit him. Well, I won't hit him, but I'm gonna try to push him hard. It's hard, right? Like it's really hard to, he got his hands. When I get him on his side, now stay there. It's hard to defend, right? Like he can attest. So if you can get him to his side, that's when we can use those pushing methods. If we can't, we use those headlock methods, trying to get those ankles, trying to pick him up. Once he's on that side, now I reinforce that brute strength and get to an angle, okay? So again, three main methods that you can get them from seated to supine. You gotta interplay them together to get the best success. Hope you guys enjoy that.